Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK case number 79. We have an amazing case here, so let's go ahead and begin. We have an axial T1 and an axial T2 fat side image through the toes. And the marker is placed here on the medial aspect of the great toe. And the high yield question is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a Morn's neuroma, a tenosynovial giant cell tumor, intermetatarsal bursitis, or a vascular malformation? What's the most likely diagnosis? And when we come back here to these images, notice that there's a lesion here along the plantar aspect of the great toe. It's T1 hypointense or darker than muscle. And it's T2 predominantly bright, right? Heterogeneously hyperintense to muscle, but there are some areas of dark signal, hypointense signal right here, right? And notice that it's intimately associated with this tendon. So this here is the bone. This black line here is the cortex, but then this black ovoid structure is the flexor hallucis longus tendon. There's no fat cleavage plane between this tendon and the lesion both on T1 and T2 weighted images. So that's a key component to this diagnosis, which makes the diagnosis of tenosynovial giant cell tumor the right diagnosis here because of its intimate association with the flexor tendon. So that's the correct answer here. Notice that this is not a Morse neuroma because a Morse neuroma would be in the intermetatarsal interspace between the metatarsals in the space between them here. And furthermore, it would be plantar to the intermetatarsal ligament. If we draw an imaginary line between the flexor tendons of one digit to the flexor tendons of another digit, a Morse normal would be plantar to that. So it would be plantar to that ligament. Intermetatarsal bursitis is fluid also in the interspace, but it would be above that intermetatarsal ligament. So you would have, if again, if we draw that imaginary line, it would be dorsal to that intermetatarsal ligament if you have fluid in the inner spaces. And a vascular malformation would be a consideration, but you know, oftentimes or sometimes you can have calcifications or flebolus associated with vascular malformations. You know, that would be dark on MRI. We don't see that here. Also, vascular malformations can invade different anatomic planes. This is very well-defined. It's confined to a specific space, making vascular malformation like a hemangioma or something like that less likely. So the best diagnosis here would be a tenosynovial giant cell tumor. This was formerly known as a giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, or PVNS, pigmented villar nodular synovitis. Now, according to the WHO classification, this is now coined tenosynovial giant cell tumor. This really is just a benign proliferation of chronic blood or hemosiderin along bursa, tendon sheaths, joint capsules, in this case, associated with the tendon. So benign synovial proliferation. This most commonly occurs in the fingers. 85% of these occur in the fingers, but as in this index case, this occurred in the toe. This is usually seen in middle-aged individuals between the ages of 30 and 50, and females are more likely to have it. In fact, they're two times as likely to get tenosynovial giant cell tumor than males. And really the key is, as I stated, is that identifying the intimate association between the lesion and the tendon or the tendon sheath. Typically on an MRI, it's well-defined. It's going to be dark, iso-intense to muscle or hypo-intense on T2. It can be very variable. It can range from hypo-intense or dark to muscle to even brighter than muscle, but there's often some dark signal like we had in our index case because that represents hemosiderin, maybe fibrous tissue. Look for some even trace amount of dark signal on the T2. And oftentimes these enhance on post-contrast imaging. Uh, it's important to note that after you take these out or you resect them, they have a high rate of local recurrence, up to 44% rate of local recurrence. And I just want to show that T1 sagittal image because this really shows the intimate association with the tendon, right? So, you know, this is a joint space and this black structure here is the flexor tendon and it's literally hugging the flexor tendon here, right? So, you know, I think the sagittal view also shows the relationship to the tendon even better. So great case of tenosynovial giant cell tumor. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the MedED page and we'll see you next week for another amazing musculoskeletal radiology case.